IES's Suncast application can be used for evaluating shading, both for compliance with building regulations and to target Green Star Daylight credits. In 2011, the NBRs were changed to include clauses that gave rise to our regulations on energy efficiency in buildings. One of the requirements of the regulations is that buildings need to be shaded from at least 80% of summer solar radiation. Let's open a project in the VE to have a look at how we can simply visualize this information using IES. Once a project is selected, there are some important steps that need to have been completed to perform a shading analysis. Firstly, the models must have the correct geometry, including all fenestration and shading elements. And this can be checked using Model Viewer 2. Secondly, the site orientation should also be correctly set and model it. And this can also be checked. Thirdly, we need to ensure that the simulation is set to the correct physical location for the project. And then select an appropriate simulation weather file for the location. The project is then ready to run the Suncast solar shading calculations. The time that these take to run will depend on the size and complexity of your model and your computing power. When they are complete, you will see a table. This gives an hourly analysis of solar altitudes for this location across the year. You can go down a level within the model to see the exposure on any wall as a total area or as a percentage of the total area. Or you can go down to the bottom level to see the same options for each window opening. This is useful for numerical analysis during detailed design. But at early design stage, what is most helpful is being able to perform a graphic analysis of solar exposure. By switching to the Analysis tab and running the analysis for the year, we can choose to run either the solar energy analysis or the solar exposure analysis. If we look at the solar energy analysis, we can see the total solar exposure in kilowatt hours or kilowatt hours per square meter, which is important for evaluating solar loads. We can see where unshaded windows will result in maximum heat gain, or we can see where best to position a solar PV panel or solar geyser collection plate to maximize solar gain. If we look at the solar exposure, we can visualize the total number of hours of solar exposure or we can see the solar exposure on each building element as the percentage of the total available solar exposure for a given time period, which lets us quickly and easily evaluate shading. By reviewing the graphic data over different months, we can see how well the shading is performing at different times of the year to ensure that windows maximize solar gain in winter and minimize it in summer. If we select the option to only show values on the windows and then apply this on a custom gradient scale ranging from 20 to 100 percent, any opening that shows a color during the summer period has insufficient shading for SANS 10400 XA. The building may still be compliant when assessed holistically, but adding shading on these windows would help to improve the summer performance. Now let's look at Suncast for targeting Green Star credits, specifically IEQ5 for daylight glare control. We need to show that fixed shading devices shade the working plane from direct sun at desk height at 1.5 meters in from the center of the glazing for 80% of standard working hours. To do this, we start by making a copy of the existing model for daylight glare control manipulation. Once we are in the glare control model, we will turn off all geometry except for the building itself. We can then select the area of interest, open it in elevation, and divide it at the required working plane height without altering our thermal analysis model.
by positioning a small glass pane one and a half meters in from the center of the glazing. We are creating the area to assess for glare. And you can check this window visually by using Model Viewer 2. We can then run the annual suncast simulation for the full year once again to generate data for this new pane of glass. Once the solar shading calculations are complete, we can select the area of interest once again, and by going down through the model levels, we can view the results on the glass pane. Remember that we need to look at the internal results, as this is an internal window. We can then export the data in the solar exposure table to Excel for analysing the occupied hours. If the solar exposure for direct sunlight on the selected pane of glass is less than 20% of the standard working hours as stipulated in the credit guidance, then there is sufficient glare control to achieve the Green Star credit. If you would like to find out more about solar shading in the IES virtual environment, please contact us at sales at IESVE.com or visit our website at www.iesve.com.